In this presentation, we are going to look at some simple statistical operations with the Julia programming language. So, uh, some well-known ones here to start us off with. Sum, size, size is simply the sample size or the number of elements. Mean, arithmetic mean. Median, again, just straightforward enough, median. VAR for variance and STD for standard deviation. Uh, in other programming languages, the standard deviation is SD rather than STD, so that might be one conspicuous difference there. Uh, so if you're familiar with other languages, that's probably very uh, familiar stuff. Uh, let's look at uh, bring up Julia here now, and what we have here is a little example here, X. So that contains 11 elements there. Uh, they're already sorted, actually, so... Um, we're not going to. Uh, we're going to. That's going to be relevant later on, actually. So the mean of x, uh, fifteen point nine zero nine. Median of x, sixteen. So far, so good. Let's sum up the values here. Sum of x, one hundred seventy-five. The product of x. This is probably going to be a huge number. Yeah. Or oh, sorry, prod. There we are. It's a huge number. We're gonna because it's so big. We're gonna get into some memory problems here. So I'm not gonna. That's a, a to do with the the size of the memory memory allocation for large numbers. Uh, so anyway, what else? The size of X is there's 11 elements in this data set here. Okay. So and. That's grand. So let's bring up, uh, talk about, for, uh, the next thing is histograms. So there's a command here called hist, H-I-S-T. And in other programming languages, languages, what would happen there is that would bring up a histogram, a graphic. But here it gives up, brings up information about the histogram. So it actually brings up numerical information about the histogram. And what is this about? So it's actually, I've done it up here on this slide. So what we have here is information about the class intervals, or the bins as they are also called. Class intervals, bins, more or less the same thing. So what this says is that we have intervals of width 10, 10 that's the 10 in the middle, and it goes from 0 to 10, 10 to 20, and 20 to 30. Okay, so that's the information that was gleaned there. So it's the lower limit of the, the lowest bin and the upper limit of the upper bin and the width of each bin. Over here we have the frequency for each bin, the frequency for each class interval. So 3, 4, and 4, let's point them out. This is 3, 5, and 9 for the first interval, the first class interval. That's in the first bin. 11, 14, 16, 18, that's in the second bin. That's the 4 from the second bin. 21, 22, 27, 29, that's the last bin there. So that's the uh, uh, numeric information about the histogram rather than graphical information. Okay, let's uh, move on to some quick um, cumulative functions there. Now, these I rarely see occur uh, see occurring until I actually see them quite often. Uh, cumulative sum, cumulative product, cumulative minimum, and cumulative maximum. Now, the cumulative product is going to be a very uh, crazy number, so I'm going to sort of leave that till the end. Uh, cumulative sum... Of x, so essentially what goes happens is it adds up all the numbers uh, and until we get uh, adds adds up each uh, all the numbers and uh, keeps track of the total as we go. So it's a running total, and at the bottom we see that the the total of the all eleven numbers is one seven five, something we've seen earlier. Okay, so cumulative uh, minimum. Now, the whole way through, the min cumulative minimum is 3, and that's because the data set is sorted. So let's see, do I have another data set here called Y? No, I don't actually. What's it called? Z. Uh, actually, I'm just going to... Uh, 1, 5, 8, 3, 2. Okay. And what we're going to do is compute the cumulative minimum of Z. Okay, now what we're going to do is compute the cumulative maximum of Z. It sort of helps that the data set is not sorted. So the cumulative maximum of Z, again I'll just bring up Z here, and the cumulative maximum of Z 
it goes through the data set and picks out which has been the most recent uh, maximum, the, the most recent large or the, the largest value from all values checked out so far. Um, in the first instance, it's one. Then it checks one and five, and now five becomes the maximum. Then it checks eight, and eight becomes the maximum. Then it checks three. In this case, eight is still the maximum, and two, eight is still the maximum. Uh, let's compute the cumulative product of z. So let's clear the screen. Cumulative product of z, and again, these numbers can become huge very quickly. So uh, for that example, 1, 5, 40, 120, and 240. So that's the cumulative product of z. The cumulative product of y actually is a mad numbers. Essentially, like unless you've got really small values, things get out of control here. See what happens here. Essentially, what we have here is uh, the, there's not enough memory for these numbers. So it's a sort of out of memory problem. Uh, some just something to watch out for. It's actually unless you're if you're dealing with small values, it's not a problem. But if you're dealing with uh, values greater than one, it, it can be a problem, and you will run into memory problems. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Bye bye.